Traditionally genetic testing required the intervention of a healthcare professional who is responsible for determining what tests needed to be done for at-risk patients. As technology and the internet has advanced, many have been drawn to the idea of taking their health into their own hands, and direct-to-consumer testing has provided an outlet for this. Through various advertising techniques, companies have attracted customers into understanding more about their genetic makeup, predisposed risks, ancestry, traits, and general health factors. Through a simple cheek swab, the lab analyzes and provides results, and within a few weeks anyone can have their genetic profile. Because so many different companies and tests are available it can be difficult to determine which test is the best and provides the most accurate, reliable and safe results. What happens to saliva after the lab? Where does our sample go? Who houses our results and what permissions do they have? Is additional research being performed? A saliva sample is first collected in a small collection tube and mailed to DTC companies, where it undergoes various laboratory processes to generate genetic results and analyzes. In the lab, each sample is scanned with its barcode to allow for identification. A visual exam is then conducted to ensure the sample tube contains enough saliva. Next, an automated DNA extraction process occurs using either a DNA extraction kit or rubbing alcohol. Once DNA has been extracted, it is then amplified using polymerase chain reaction PCR, to duplicate the amount of DNA in the saliva samples into multiple copies. The amplified DNA is then cut into smaller fragments. After this process, genotyping occurs, using the single nucleotide polymorphism SNP, array method. The SNP array is used to measure genetic variations of an individual. This array, consists of a custom SNP chip, which contains millions of microscopic beads, attached to a probe. The probe is fluorescently labeled and contains a bit of DNA that matches a genetic variant that is tested for. The amplified DNA binds to the matching DNA probes, which then identifies which genetic variant the amplified DNA corresponds to. These results are then compiled into a report that is sent to the customer. There have been many headlines about tampered privacy once your saliva is swapped and shipped away to these popular DTC companies. Although many companies have made it possible for one to view their terms of agreement policy, many of us are still reluctant to read this long and boring paragraph as we are distracted by what information this company is promising to reveal to us. It appears that clicking that, I accept button, may be creating more vulnerability for customers than we think. Now, let's focus on a specific way in which genetic testing may create more harm than good. Once your saliva is processed, it now serves as a way to identify not only you, but individuals closely related to you. By this point, you have now given third-party companies, such as law enforcement, access to information about another person in your family that you have consented to on their behalf. In a more dangerous scenario, higher-up criminal organizations may one day be able to gain access to these DTC databases and obtain your genetic and personal data. Are some of us aware of this potential breach in privacy? A study conducted in the United States revealed that 96% of consumers were confident that DTC companies were keeping their information safe. Upon investigation in 2010, it was revealed that only 7 out of 32 DTC companies had an accessible privacy policy on their website. It was suggested that this false sense of trust might be rooted in the notion of a medical professional and patient relationship. Despite these tests being able to offer health-related information, no physicians are involved in the sampling or analyzing process. This can lead to misinterpretation of results privacy breaches as well as putting the ones closest to you at risk. By displaying your personal genetic information on an online database, you may also be exposing their future health implications. This brings up the debate of the right to know one's genome versus the right not to know. Although it can be argued that understanding one's genome can be empowering, at what point does it become wrong for someone else to access them?
In 2017, Canada passed the Genetic Non-Discrimination Act that inhibits insurers and some employers from accessing your genetic info. In the United States, on the other hand, a similar act was passed in 2008 but allows for certain insurers, such as life and disability, to access this information. These companies are great because they allow you to explore your curiosity. That being said, personal information can be used without your knowledge, to facilitate dangerous activity. Ultimately, the choice is yours. Are you spitting in that tube?